This is FBG Jen. And FBG Kristen. And I'm FBG Margo, host and producer. You're listening to the podcast that will help you keep a lid on the junk in the trunk and inspire you to live a happy and confident life. Each episode, we chat with motivational experts and celebs and share our own candid adventures in being healthy. If you're looking for a podcast that's equal parts hilarious and enlightening, well then welcome to the Fit Bottomed Girls podcast. Hey, hey everyone, it's FBG Margo and you're listening to a new year, new rear Fit Bottom replay of some of our favorite must listen episodes. These are the interviews that'll give you insight, info, and inspiration to make this year your healthiest, happiest, and most awesome. And these episodes are going to be sponsored by our favorite all-natural deodorant line, Inspire Bath. In fact, for every bottle you purchase, they donate one to help build and empower women and girls at shelters and interim homes. Get yours and help give back at InspireBath.com. Now, let's get into the show. Welcome back to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. This is FBG Margo, and on the line today, we have Jen. And we have Kristen. Hi. And my God, you guys, we have Bob Harper on our show again. Yay! So first, it's be- extra special this time. It's very <laughs> extra special. But before we talk about Bob, Jen, we have to talk about something. We're on Spotify now. I know. It is so exciting. So you guys, if you have Spotify, definitely look for us. We are on there, and we are so excited to be there. And also, if you like the shoe, if you like the shoe, if you like the show, you, you, <laughs> what you need to do is subscribe to it in iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. That way, you never miss an episode as awesome as this one. But also, if you really love the show, especially in Apple Podcasts, iTunes, if you could leave a review for us, that would be amazing. And we'll read all of the five star reviews on the show. So just wanted to put that out there. I know Apple doesn't make it easy, but we would really love that. It helps us get more stand and stuff like that so we get awesome guests just like him all the time so thank you guys so much and yeah Bob Harper you guys he was on the show again we had him on last October or November and then in February he had a heart attack yeah and like died yeah like here in New York City (laughs) I know it's crazy to think about yeah and then came back to life and yes yeah he basically came back to life and you know it was pretty it was a pretty scary time. He was, you know, getting back into the workout groove and his eating groove and just his life groove. And that's what he kind of talks about in today's episode. He has a new book. It's called The Super Carb Diet. And he talks, you know, we talk about that, of course, but he also just talks about what he's done since this heart attack and how he's making himself heal himself and feel better. And I don't know, how amazing was this interview? What was your favorite part, Jen? Oh my, oh my gosh. It was, it was so amazing because, I mean, we've talked to Bob we had had other conversation with him before on the podcast and that was great. And I've talked to him before and he's always just been like, so like just so full of life and so charismatic and just really like authentic and real. But I, this, this interview was really vulnerable and you can really tell like both from his book, what he's written in his book and just from, I mean, some of the deep things that he's, he's still kind of grappling with, I think now is just, Oh, like <laughs> it's so difficult. It's such like a heart forward, you know, I guess pun intended interview. I felt like in so many different ways. It was so, that was so cool. Um, but he's still funny. And my favorite part of this interview is so much of like his self reflection of that time and how his life has changed since then and how that's changed his philosophy of kind of like not just his health and fitness, but like who he is as a person. But at one point, I start talking about taco salads in the interview. Yes, you do. And of course I, you do. Of course I do. And I love taco salads. Like I have friends who'd be like, if you could have like one last meal, what would it be? <laughs> like a taco salad. And they're like, you're lying. And I'm like, I'm not lying. That is the truth. <laughs> it's actually a taco salad. Um, I really, really like them. And so taco salads come up and Bob also loves taco salads. So then he also said that he would make a taco salad and put it on Insta story. So... I'm waiting for that. Bob, I need your taco salad recipe because what if like I could make my taco salads even better? I don't know how my life would change, but I, I think it would change. Yes, Seems Bob. Likely. Please do so. We know you're listening right now. That's right. Yeah. What about you, um, Chris? Well, you know, I I thought it was really cool that this wasn't just like a interview of us asking questions and him giving us answers to those questions. Like, this was a discussion and it sort of started 
I mean, it was like, it felt that way almost before we even had yeah. him on, because I think when we reached out after we knew that he was, that he had a book coming out, his response to like being willing to come on was immediate and very positive. So, you know, that's, you know, of course that feels nice because he's a big deal. He's wonderful. We love him and we love having him on, but then he came on and it, you know, we were just kind of, we were like shooting the shit and just talking, you know, like you would talk with any old friend, you know, and at one point it really struck me that he was, he started talking about something and he said, but you know what? I want to know what you guys think, which it just shows, I think a lot about him that he, he knows a lot. He's well known for the things that he's learned and the things that he does, but he's not so big or, you know, he's not, he's certainly not haughty. So he's willing to, to hear what other people have to say about it. And I, I thought that was really special. It just made it feel extremely inclusive and extremely friendly. And it's always felt like that with him, but this was just like a little, a little next step. So, well, and how cool for him to be so curious too, yes. you know, like, like he's clearly in a time in his life where it's like a lot of things have changed for him. So like, wait, how do you guys do this? How do you make this work? Like, he's just trying to almost like take it all in again. I kind of get that sense. I don't know. That was super cool. I agree. How about you, Margo? Well, you know, we're all animal lovers, aren't we? And yes. when he talks about his dog, Carl, and I remember reading this, I believe it was in People magazine, but when he was first in the hospital, his friend snuck his dog, Carl, in with him. And he's a, Carl is a smaller dog, so he was kind of under the crook of his arm, you know, at the hospital. And he, let, he talks about how the nurses turned a blind eye and just let him have his dog with him and just how important it was to his healing to have his best friend with him and that was my favorite part and I think like for the three of us that was a part where we all kind of like wiped a little tear from our little high ducks yeah. <laughs> you know we could all kind of relate to that but he's a human being guys like that's of course that's it you know he's vulnerable like the rest of us you know and he was looking death in the eye and he he kicked its ass right and he's ready to come yeah. back and he has a lot to teach us and you know how to eat and how to take better care and how I love this part of this interview also just talking about balance and just balance in all areas of your life and he felt like he was out of balance and this is why so now he's leading a different path and maybe that you know it can help somebody and so the, I love these kind of shows because I feel like we're going to help somebody you know someone's going to yeah. listen and it's going to make a difference so that always you know makes me feel you know makes me cavell it makes me happy so yeah this was this was one of my favorites agreed yeah so one of the things he talks about and this ain't where we were we were kibitzing with him at the end is that he talks about there's certain foods he eats every day <laughs> and we were talking like yep me too me too so I wanted to know you guys are there foods you eat every day? What are your favorite foods? What do you always have in your pantry or your, or your fridge? Do you want me to talk about taco salads again? Please. No. Do something <laughs> different. I want to I know a different like one. Like <laughs> Or jicama. Yeah, we do talk about jicama and taco salads with jicama. Um, <laughs> no, there seems to be some some normal things. Like it's almost always a green smoothie, a protein bar, or um, I eat a lot of bell peppers, like red, yellow, orange I really like bell peppers and it helps my daughter likes them too so I find that's like one of the things I always have like strips of in the fridge or or bell peppers and then turkey with avocado on it just turkey Mm. and avocado it's delicious good snack what about you guys so I'm a big big fan of sweet potatoes and I I'm very into the sweet patootle right now I just made I think we've talked about this before but literally just last night I made the recipe slash recipe from Devin Sisson's kitchen intuition book. Oh yeah. Um, and it, I made it because my husband requested it. Like he was driving home, driving home from a couple hours away. And he's like, you know, could you make that tonight? That sounds really good. So I did that. I chopped a bunch of veggies up in it, but generally like sweet potatoes with um, some black beans and onions and bell peppers and avocado is mm, so good. Yum. Ooh. Yeah. Margo. I have eggs almost every single day. I like scrambled eggs. I like fried eggs. I like boiled eggs. Like I always have eggs. I get very upset at Trader Joe's where they don't have the, they have the boiled eggs. You know, you can just, oh, they're just wonderful. Oh, they're perfect. So handy. Chop them up in a salad or whatever. Like, honestly, I, I eat that every day. I have nuts every day, especially almonds. I love almonds. And, you know, it's not healthy, but coffee. I gotta have it. And you don't want <laughs> a world with me not having it. Trust me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I agree. 
Same. So I guess we should just go right into this interview with Bob. I mean, it's it's such a wonderful interview. You guys are going to really, really love it. I know you will. So here we go. Our interview, our second interview. He's a returning champion with the Bob Harper. Bob Harper is a fitness trainer and health expert who starred as the host of NBC's The Biggest Loser. A three-time number one New York Times bestselling author, he has his own line of best-selling workout DVDs and an online fitness program called Blackfire. Since his much-publicized heart attack in February 2017, Harper has redoubled his efforts to educate and enlighten his fans about nutrition and its role in building health. He is here today to talk about his favorite fitness and nutrition tips, plus the inside scoop on his new book, The Super Carb Diet. Welcome back to the show, Bob Harper. I am so glad to be here with you guys today. So this is FBG Margo, and on the line today we have FBG Jen and Kristen. And I'm going to ask you the first question. Uh, we are okay. so lucky to have you back. We had to have you on the show last year. But, you know, who could have predicted your heart attack this past February? So... Part of what you believe caused it, in addition to your family health history, of course, was a lack of balance in your life. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, well, let me tell you, it's been, um, it has been a crazy, crazy year. I had my heart attack on February the 12th of this year, and um, it I found out that uh, it was a direct result of a genetic issue that I have um, called lipoprotein A. And uh, it's interesting because when people get checked out, when you go to the doctor and you get your cholesterol checked out, you know, it's all about checking out your LDL, your HDL, but there's something else that people should be getting um, checked out, and that's their LPA. And... um, that was something that I never knew about until after I woke up two days later in a hospital um, coming out of a, a heart attack, and I also went into cardiac arrest. Was it, I have a question about the LPA. Is that something that can be done with, like, a, a normal blood test? Or, yeah. Okay. But that's yeah. not normally, like, part of the standard panel that you would get when you get your cholesterol check, so probably something you would have to specifically ask for. That's right. And, okay. uh, you know, it's like me just trying to get the message out that uh, when you do get um, checked out and you get your cholesterol checked out, you need to uh, make sure that they're also um, doing that. Okay. That's really, really good information. Um, Margaret, that's not my official question. I want to go to my, my actual official question. Okay. Um, <laughs> So first, I'm super glad you're alive because like the the world needs Bob Harper. Like we lost David Bowie and George Michael and the world needs <laughs> this world needs Bob Harper. Um so yay, thanks for well, fighting thank- really, really hard. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm really glad to be alive. <laughs> yeah. Um when in the intro of your new book, you talk about your recovery and how you've had to learn to trust your heart again. Um, and that I was like, oh my gosh, that could just make me sob because I can, you know, the heart is such a metaphor for obviously it's like it powers your body, but it also, you know, kind of powers your soul. So I know that like, not just on how scary and probably life changing this entire thing was for you, but just how personal and emotional it was. Where are you now with that trust building with your heart? Where are you in that process now? Um, that is a really good question. It's been something that I've been working on on a daily basis. I've been doing a lot of yoga uh, since my heart attack, and um, and I was never one. I mean, a long time ago, I used to do yoga, but then I ended up hating it because I just would be so competitive. I would um, I would be so needing to just be better because that's how my brain always was. And like, I couldn't do it. And I just decided, you know what, I don't ever want to do yoga again. So all of a sudden I find myself back or I found myself back into a yoga studio because that's what my doctors allowed me to do after a certain period of time in my cardiac rehab. And, um, in yoga, there's so much talk of your heart and, uh, your heart center and, you know, breathe into your heart. It's so heart centric. And, it was really good for me because I have been in this place of having to trust my heart again, because like you've said, and like how I wrote in my book, it's like, your heart's just 
been with you since you know uh, since you were born and and um one day my heart decided to stop and it's a real scary thing because i i would walk around thinking am i going to have another heart attack is this like is my heart going to stop on me again and it it was like a, a lot of emotional soul searching and it's just been like a daily uh, just kind of a daily mantra in my head of like, I trust my heart. I love my heart. And that kind of sounds weird, but uh, it's what's worked for me. In addition to, to yoga and just kind of reframing how you're approaching fitness in that way, could you talk about some of the other keys to your recovery? Yeah. Well, um, first of all, uh, my support group, uh, my friends, family, I mean, they have been, uh, hugely uh, important for uh, my recovery because I found that I was in a position where me, the person that was has been always super self-sufficient, independent, I needed help. I needed help um, just for my day-to-day. I needed help uh, uh, for emotional support. And uh, and they they've really helped me through this so much. And also getting back into the gym, like it, it was a really scary thing for me because the gym and a really emotional thing for me because the gym has always been my happy place. It's the place where I go to be with my friends. It goes, it's a place where I go to, to work out and, you know, and and relieve my stress. And I would have panic attacks. I'd go into the gym and I didn't want to work out when, when I was cleared to work out, I just, I was afraid. And it was just, having um, my friend just kind of support me through that and and also just like have those real come to Jesus moment um, talk uh, conversations that I would have with myself. So you do mention in your book about balance and it's not just balance with your health, but also what's on your plate. Um, can you mm-hmm. talk a little bit about that, please? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that what I really want the super carb diet to be for people is a reset I think that uh, there have been so many plans. We've all been on them. We've all done them. Uh, It's like I know that like if I completely carb deplete, I am going to lose weight. I have found that like balance works so much better for me and people that I've worked with because it's just like not something that a lot of people can really sustain. To just all of a sudden decide, okay, I'm never going to – have carb, uh, uh, complex carbs again, you know, it's just like something that I don't want to be, I don't want to do. And so working with doctors, working with, um, experts, uh, all, all of us kind of like, you know, commiserating and getting together and kind of figuring out, you know, how the super carb diet, um, was going to be, it all just came back to balance. We need to look at our plate and, um, realize that protein, fat, carbs are all there. Those macronutrients are there because they are beneficial to a healthy mind and body. Reading this book, reading the super carb diet and past um, versus like your past books, that approach is like you're talking about is, is pretty different. Can you talk about how, like how now how you view maybe like your fitness or overall health philosophy with yourself and with your clients, how, like, what is that now versus what it was? How different is it? And what has that process been like for you? I'll tell you. And, uh, and it's something that I've talked about in this book. And before my heart attack, uh, I always had these pillars that um, I discussed. And it's about nutrition. It's about exercise. It is about stress levels. It's about sleep. These, these pillars have not changed for me at all. But what has really changed is the order in which I – choose to discuss them now. And I really do feel like stress and stress management is the key to not only weight loss, but a healthy, bo- a healthy mind and, um, and your healthy body. Because think about it. If you're stressed out, it's going to regulate how you eat that day. It's going to regulate if you choose to work out or not. A, a, a good mood is going to bring you into, um, I'm going to go to the gym. A good mood is going to be like, you know what? I'm not going to eat that crappy food that I know I'm not supposed to have at lunch today. But when you're stressed out, it can like completely reverse any kind of benefits that you're trying to do. So that's why I really talk about 
how important it is to manage your stress in any way you can manage that because it's the key to it all. Fantastic. And I mean, just like amen to all of that. What are some of your favorite stress busting or stress management techniques Well, I, that some of us can do at home? Well, I'll tell you this, and uh, I'm a big uh, transcendental meditation guy, and I've been doing it for a while. And uh, I'll share something really personal with you guys. When I was going through my recovery, I found that I wasn't doing my TM the way that I um, was supposed to or should have done because it was almost like I was in such a dark place for a while that uh, I didn't know I didn't know how to get out of it. I started to like get comfortable in that darkness and uh, and all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I had to remind myself and remember, get back to um, meditating because I knew it would, uh, I knew it was gonna start making me feel better and it did. So I do that, but like uh, it it's whatever you can do to find find a way to relieve it. Turning off your phone, there's like, or when your phone's on, there's like these great um, apps now that um, like talk about meditation, like those Apple watches that just like tell you to breathe all of a sudden. You know, some people could think that's kind of silly, but like it's really not in the day and age that we live in. It's, it's finding that time that you can just like shut off from all the crap in the world that is just like bogging you down. And, and so when I go on my walks with my dogs in the morning, I just did that. And it's like, it makes me feel so good. And, uh, and like TN makes me feel so good. And also I get people to really think about in the course of your day, find something that makes you happy, that brings you joy. Uh, because I really do believe that, um, we need that. We live in a world that's kind of like, you know, upside down right now. And we need to find a way to just like really take care of our souls. And, and, and I think that when you, you just acknowledge and you, you acknowledge something that like made you feel good, it, it, it just starts to manifest in the body. It does. And I have an important follow-up question to that. Um, you mentioned walking with your dogs and we need to know has Vivian become comfortable wearing sweaters in the in the cold weather or not? <laughs> we are really, dying here. Again, again, a really really good question. Yeah. Um, she's <laughs> she's here right now with me, and she's so happy. She's playing with her little toy, jumping around because I took her sweater off. She, <laughs> I put that sweater on her, and it is like uh, it, 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 it's her kryptonite. I mean, <laughs> she just stops. And which is really great because I'll tell you now, it's like when I leave the house, um, I put it on her because I know that she will not get under the Christmas tree and start chewing the presents that she likes to do. Mm. Um, she's opened up some of her own presents under the tree. <laughs> she's just still like, I don't know what it is about that sweater. Um, <laughs> she, gets, she gets real. It just like, it, it just stops her in her tracks. And her and Carl, they, they seem like they like to play. Oh yeah. They, um, she loves Carl. They um, are very connected with one another. Um, you know, he, he'll all of a sudden get to a point where he just doesn't want to play anymore and just kind of like growls at her and she just kind of like runs off and does her own thing. But um, <laughs> my dogs have been, especially especially Carl, oh, they're, they're so different. They've been so different in, in the road to my recovery because and it's so, and I have to be really careful when I talk about this because I could start to cry immediately. Um, but you know, Carl was there for me also. I mean, th my, my friends brought him into the hospital. The nurses turned a blind eye. Um, mm. and, and he just was, he was there beside me every step of the way. And then like midway through my recovery, when, um, I decided I wanted another dog and, and, and like friends were just kind of like, Bob, you know, do you think this is a, a good idea? You know, you're not ready. And I was just like, I'm doing it because there was a dog in the neighborhood that needed needed a home. And I was like, I'm going to do this. And it was the best thing I've done. I mean, she's <laughs> these dogs have been just they've they've saved my life. Dogs are the best. They are. Yeah, and now I'm crying. Yeah, I know. I, know. I was like, are. I could weep over that. Yeah. Oh, God. Like I was talking with um I, I had dinner last night because I've been talking so much about my heart attack and recovery because because of the book. And I'm sitting there with my friends last night at dinner. And, um, I have these like 
you know, these, these thoughts that like pop up every once in a while. And lately it's been because talking about the heart attack, Carl was with me in the gym that day. And, yeah. um, and he, he's in like the, this little office whilst I'm working out all the time. He's like, you know, that's his little place. So he's like, you know, not in anybody's way. And so he was there when it happened and all like, I got fixated on this. I was like, wait a minute. What did, did, do you, did you guys like open the door and like, did he see me on the ground? Like, like, you know, it was just like, it was so upsetting. I was like, I need to know how he was. And like, they were like, no, he never saw you on the ground. But like, you know, then they took me off to the hospital and my friends took Carl home. And I was so worried about him being so confused because Carl is super attached to me. And, and um, oh, I just, I just needed to know, you know, how Carl was during that because like if he if he would have run up and and you know saw me laying there friggin' dead on the ground like you know I just think that it would have just been so traumatic for him. Yeah. I mean, do you see how like I get yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pass <Aww>. the tissues. <laughs> no, it's, like, it's like I love these dogs. So I'm like I'm the crazy dog. I'm the, you know not the crazy dog lady, but I'm the crazy dog man. I mean, you know, I'm like this is me. Oh, you're in very good company, Bob. Like, okay. we are very much there with you. Yeah. Yeah. Margo, can you formulate a question, Carly? I know. I'm thinking about my cats right now and how what wonderful they are to be. Um, so, so, Bob, you have been talking a lot about heart health. Of course, you're talking about your heart attack. You're talking about this book. But you know, as a takeaway for our audience, is there something they can do today to improve their heart health? Is there something you can pass along to them that's just our average listener? What would you say? Yeah. I think that um, I really want people to be aware of their fat intake. We live in a world where people are very, um, very excited about like these high fat diets. And I'm, I'm there to kind of like bring, bring rationale into the, um, into this arena. Uh, and I know that there'll be people that will disagree with me, but um, all the d doctors that I've spoken with, all the experts that I have surrounded myself around, it's like, yes, there are good fats, these good fats that the body needs, and like, um, and we know them all. We know all the olive oils and the cat, the almonds and the nuts and the uh, uh, the avocados. But we still have to be aware of the portion size of those um, fats. You can't just think, oh, I can eat a whole bag of almonds because you know everyone said that they're good for me. It's like we've got to still watch our fat intake, and that's why um, the super carb diet's um, important because. It's again bringing that balance in and showing that you know you can't you shouldn't rely on all protein you shouldn't rely on all fat you know and there are some people that think you know a high carb diet is um, really beneficial for certain things and it's like you know just bringing everything <laughs> all back oh, there's, there's my dogs um, <laughs> so so that's like that would be the the one of the first things I would say because we all know. You know, we know we got to stay with the crappy carbs. We know we got to stay away from all the sugar. Like, we know all this. Um, but I think that, like, I'm here to kind of uh, tap people on the shoulder and go, okay, let's have this conversation about fat, too. Awesome. So when we talked to you last time, you were about to go to, I believe, a gymnastics camp? <gasps> were you I, able to do that? No, I was not able to do that. Uh, so, I know. Uh, Dave Durante, Power Monkey like he is i mean if you if you don't follow dave durante or power um power monkey fitness on um instagram do yourself a favor and do it like these guys are unbelievable uh -huh. but uh yeah i wasn't able to uh to do that so what or do you have anything new do you have any current goals or is your goal just like i'm gonna just work on balance <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that uh I think that my goals right now, you know, I'm get, I'm getting my, I'm getting strength back, and that's, um, that's felt really good. And also, this is, and this is crazy, <laughs> and, and and anybody that knows me knows that, like, what I'm about to say. When I, when I first said this to my friends, they were like, "Wait a minute, what have you done to Bob Harper?" I, I still, I love to work out. It's like it. It, it it feels great and all you know I I understand and and love it but like it's not the end of the world if I don't get to work out on a, uh, on any given day if I I don't it's like it's not a driving force like it always has been because I had to I had to kind of like I went through a, a super 
uh, soul searching where uh, it was taken away from me. I wasn't allowed to go to um, to the gym. I wasn't allowed to work out, and I went through a, I mean, just a serious um, identity crisis. And um, and now it's like it's really important, but it's not the be all end all for me anymore. Wonderful. So I have to say, I really enjoy following you on Spotify. Oh. I don't think it's creepy that I can see what you're listening to at all. Uh, and um, <laughs> I, so I'm, but I'm curious, what's on your playlist and has that changed? Like, are you listening to, to more chill stuff or are you still loving the same, the same music? Well, I'll tell you this, I'm really listening to a lot of um, Christmas songs right now. <laughs> yeah, same here. I mean, yeah, yeah, my, my Christmas uh my Christmas music is just like, you know, blasting. And there's something, I don't know if you know this, uh, that I love right now on Spotify. It's like your top songs of 2017. Yeah. Oh my God. Like it's so, so cool because it's like, it just pulls these like random songs that I forgot all about. I don't know. It's just like, uh, really cool. So, um, I'm listening to a lot of that right now, and um, and also there's this um, this girl named I don't even know how to really pronounce her name um, Cinebo Say, and uh, I've been listening to her because I had to go to the dentist recently, and uh, I, there's this new dentist I went to here in New York, and she gave me nitrous, which I've never ever used nitrous ever before. You know that laughing gas stuff? Yeah. <laughs> And they were like, you know, doing some stuff. And they said, do you want any? And I was like, no, I don't need that. I've never, I've never done it. But the long story short is I ended up t- doing it. And I was listening to the music that she was playing in the room. And it was this, this girl. And uh, I remember just kind of like, you know, sitting there whilst they're like cleaning my teeth. And I was just like, oh, my God, I love this song. <laughs> <laughs> I was having this like kind of crazy moment. So, so I've been listening to her a lot. And it just kind of makes me laugh. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, crazy. I'm so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I guess I get to ask the last question today. Okay. Sure. All right. Bob Harper. Yes. What was the last thing you ate before you did this podcast interview? Oh, my God. The la- <laughs> okay, well, I was, I was late. Um, I was late with my breakfast because I went on a, um, I went on a walk. And um, I actually had the most boring thing to eat. And it was um, my Greek yogurt with berries and um, some peanut butter in it. Mm, that sounds yummy. But delicious. Because I don't normally, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's like I'm a creature of habit. I eat the same thing all the time. And, um, and, and I really think, I had a conversation with some people about this, and I want to know what you guys think. I, I feel like when you're out there, and I'm, you know, I, I promote health and wellness all the time. I've been doing it for a million years, and people are always like, what's something new? Like, tell me, like, you know, I need all these, like, you know, different kinds of workouts. I need different kinds of ways to eat. It's like, or different foods to eat. It's like, when you talk to fit people, they pretty much eat. You know, uh, it's a it, it's not a wide variety of things. Uh, they they eat pretty basic. Do you guys agree with that? I totally do. Yeah, I mean, like a taco salad without the shell. Like you could serve that to me three days a week for the rest of my life, and I would right. be totally okay with that. It's not yeah. out of deprivation. It's just like this is this is what I like. This makes me feel good. So why yeah. mess with it? Yeah, you yeah. find the things that you like to eat, and if they fit into like you know caloric intake, your macros, like whatever the case may be. It's like, you know, that you can go there, there are these go-to foods. Like, and I love to cook. So it's like, you know, I got this new skillet that I'm just like obsessed with. And, uh, you know, I'm cooking all the time, but like, I cook a lot of the, the same kind of things often. Yep. Yeah. Same like yeah. You find a few ingredients that go together well, and then yeah. you find different ways to use those same ingredients. So gotcha. that you get a little bit of a, you know, you mix it up a little, you make it special, yeah. throw yep. in some spinach. Yeah. But, you know, basically same thing. Yeah, well, your like grocery it's... list is the same. Like, it doesn't vary that much. There's just, like, less things you have to worry about and keep in your brain, I feel like, too. Exactly. And now um, all I can think about is a taco salad. I know. I that sounds a... delicious. 
I can make I a am... killer taco salad. Yes, oh. they're we'll so be right good over. and flavorful. Yes, let's all yeah. get together of taco salads. Yay. Yeah, I'm going to make a, you know what? I'm going to make a um, a taco salad and I'm going to put it on Instagram and I'm going to say that um, you guys inspired it. Yay. Yes, can we have Aww. the recipe? Tell us what you put in yours. Yes. Um, well, I'm going to have to really think about um, how I'm going to prepare it. You know what? You'll, But I know that there's going to be chopped um, black olives in it. And I know that uh, I got to figure out what that crunch is going to be. Because if I'm not going to have a tortilla in, or um, a fried chip in there, kind of a, you know, a tortilla chip, I got to figure out what that would be. And you know what I could probably do? I could probably bake up some tortillas in my, um, in my air fryer. Good. That or sounds jicama. amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Think, you could do some jicama. I, yeah. Yeah. I think we, Mm, yeah, I guess I could do the jicama, but like, <laughs> I mean, tortillas are delicious. But so remember, I'm not gonna... we're but they we're warm. promoting super carb diet, so it's like we can have that tortilla. I just don't want you to have the fried one. That's true. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm Skippy. Thank you so much for being on the show again. As all, you're you're such a wonderful guest. It's so lovely talking to you, and we're so glad you're here with us still. <laughs> Thank you so much. That really means a lot to me, and um, I'm glad you read the book. I'm glad you liked the book. And do me a favor, um, look at the last part of the acknowledgments um, because it's one of my favorite parts of the whole book. Okay, <laughs> Ooh, we'll so do. You'll, you'll, you'll right get a kick now. Out. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, I thank I thank Whitney Houston, and That's um, awesome. <laughs> and you'll you'll read. You'll read why. It's like one of my favorite parts of the whole book. <laughs> oh, I love that. Awesome. That's yeah, awesome. awesome. Yeah. Spread the I'll love on our it. channels. Okay, sure. I'll definitely do it. And give thank the dogs you. some extra snuggles from us. Yes. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Love this show? Tell us why in a five-star review on iTunes, and we'll read it on the air. Also, make sure you are a subscriber. If you want to reach out to say hi or have a question about a recent episode, yay, well, feel free to email us at podcast at fitbottomgirls.com. And if this podcast jives perfectly with your brand, consider sponsoring the show. Get more info by emailing advertising at fitbottomgirls.com. Find all kinds of Fit Bottom goodness online and on social media at Fit Bottom Girls, Fit Bottom Mamas, Fit Bottom Eats, and Fit Bottom Zen. And if books and movies are your thing, check out the other podcast I co-host called Book vs. Movie, which you can find anywhere where you search for podcasts. Thanks for listening.